Welcome to My Safety Training on Online presents Chainsaw Safety. What you will learn. BLS accident statistics for chainsaw safety. Where the most common chainsaw injuries occur. The four steps to injury prevention in chainsaw safety. Planning, education, supervision, and safe operation. We'll discuss 10 types of chainsaw injuries. Parts of the chainsaw will be explained along with the safety features. And the safety operation of limbing and bucking. Starting with felling. The Introduction to Chainsaw Injury Statistics, Part 1. More than 40,000 people are injured in, by chainsaws each year. The two most common places for injuries are the front left thigh and the back left hand. Here we can see uh, a typical year's chainsaw injuries where the upper body gets 2,452 injuries and the hand area got 10,200 and the upper leg got 10,310. Part 2, Preventing Chainsaw Injuries. When a chainsaw is at full speed, more than 600 teeth pass at a given point per second. A chainsaw chain can move up to 68 miles per hour. One in five chainsaw injuries are from kickback. A muffler on a chainsaw can reach temperatures up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. The elements of chainsaw preventing chainsaw injury are education, the planning phase, the safe operation phase, and the supervised practice phase. Here we can see a, diag uh, a diagram of the chainsaw showing the spark plug terminal on the top, the twist lock on the side, the chain sprocket cover, the chain sprocket itself, the chain tensioner, the chain catcher, the guide bar and bumper spike, as well as chain brake. The bottom part shows the front hand gar guard, the front handle, starter grip, master control level, throttle trigger interlock, rear handle, rear handle guard, fuel filler cap, and throttle triller trigger. Safety features of a chainsaw are low kickback saw chain, a hand guard, a safety tip, chain brake, vibration reduction system, a spark arrester on gasoline models, a trigger or throttle lockout, a chain catcher, and bumper spikes. Carrying a chainsaw requires that the engine should be shut off. The chain brake should be engaged. The scabbard is covering the guide bar to prevent cuts. The chainsaw is carried backward, and the muffler is carried away from the body to prevent burns. Let's discuss uh, safely starting, safely limbing and bucking, and felling. Starting at Texas 
chainsaw masker safely requires holding the chainsaw firmly in place, removing all loose debris, and making sure the guard bar is not touching anything. Step three requires making sure the chain brake is engaged. Step four of starting a chainsaw safely requires gripping the front handle with the left hand, depressing the throttle for one second with the right hand, and the chain should not creep forward because the brake is engaged. Holding a chainsaw safely requires wrapping your thumbs firmly around the handles. The right hand should be firmly on the rear handle so that the operator can reach the throttle latch and stop switch. Limbing is removing branches from a falling tree, whereas bucking is cutting a log into section. Here we can see the examples of conventional cut and an open face cut. On a conventional cut, you can see the felling notch, the felling cut, where the tree falls to the front. On an open face cut, you can see the different diagonal of the felling notch, the hinge, which is always a safety feature. A felling notch does not exceed 20% of the tree's diameter at breast height. This cut is made first. The hinge is 10% that is left uncut for the operator's safety. The felling cut is made last. It occurs on the opposite side of the tree from the felling notch. But it does not go all the way through the tree. The notch and the cut are staggered so they don't meet. Part 4, Chainsaw Injuries and Preventing Them. The most common types of chainsaw injuries are kickback, vibration syndrome, widowmaker, entanglement, stump jump. Other types of injuries are setback, crown shatter, barber chair, moving tree, spring pole. All right, we're going to explain uh, what those nasty injuries we just talked about are. Kickback is caused by spinning chain coming in contact with resistance. It causes the chainsaw to kick back toward your face. It is very common and can cause serious injury. Never cut with the tip of a chainsaw. Lock your front elbows. Be careful not to cut through nails or knots in the wood. Stand it aside. Use a low kickback chain and always use the chain brake. Vibration syndrome causes frequent users of chainsaws to get white knuckles and a loss of feeling in their fingers from the privations of the chainsaw. Its use in recent years has cut down thanks to safer working conditions and safer chainsaws. Widowmaker is caused by loose branches falling from the tree due to vibrations from the chainsaw.
trees that are being cut down may sometimes snap or drag other trees. Free the branches of a tree you are cutting before starting to cut to prevent this from occurring. Stump jump is caused by the hinge being cut or breaking when the tree is falling. The tree can jump or roll or hit other trees in either direction. Plan an escape route to prevent injuries due to stump jump. When the tree begins to move, turn off the chainsaw and escape. Sometimes a tree may tilt backward and clamp onto the bar of the saw. If the hinge breaks, then the tree can fall backward. You can use wedges to make sure the tree will fall over in the right direction. You can tie a cape, cable or rope on the top of the tree and apply steady pressure. Crown shatter occurs when the crown of the tree is been felled or, or a nearby tree snaps and shatters. This can cause hurling branches and result in injury or death. Notice the three ways to be struck. When a back cut has been made, the tree leans too far. The butt of the tree can kick backward. This happens much faster than a normal reaction time. Never stand in back of the tree you are cutting. A rolling or moving tree can catch your leg or crush you. This can occur when limbs or restraints are removed. Prevent this by staying uphill from the tree on a slope. A spring pole is a situation where the tree becomes arched as it is felled or if another tree falls on it. When cut it can violently strike out at anything in its path. Stay inside the bow of the spring pole. Always plan an escape route that is a path at a 45 degree angle away from the tree's fall. Part 4, Chainsaw Safety. Safety Equipment for Chainsaws. Personal protective equipment must be worn at all times, and this can greatly reduce injuries and prevent death from chainsaw injuries. Keep both hands on the chainsaw handles. Here we can see safety goggles, steel tooled chainsaw resistant boots, chainsaw resistant chaps, trim fitting clothing, hearing protectors, got your hair tied back, and a hard hat with a face shield. Keep the chainsaw handle clean and dry. Make sure the handle is free from fuel or oil. Keep your chainsaw properly maintained. Never use a chainsaw to cut anything other than wood and always follow the manufacturer's suggestions for sharpening and maintaining the equipment. Clear loose debris from the area. Remove combustible materials and look for broken or dead limbs in the tree to be felled and assure that there are no power lines nearby. Make sure you have an escape route and always be aware where others are in relation to what you are cutting. This includes people, houses, automobiles, etc.
Use this criteria the next time you're in a cutting situation. If a tree is a, has a large diameter than the length of the guide bar, if the tree is dead, hollow, split, or over rotten, if there's enough room to safely fell a tree, or if there's no clear escape route, and if there are no other obstacles, call a professional.